Hey everyone, it's Smite Pants Chess here once again, and I've got a very nice but very short game for you today between a player called Samsonov versus Rashid Nezmetnov. So Samsonov is playing white in this game, and Nezmetnov is playing black. Uh, and this is the first game in Nezmetnov's greatest game book. It was played in Kazan in 1929. And this was one of Nezmetnov's earliest games, and I believe Samsonov was actually the director of the chess club that he attended at the time. And in this game, Nesmetnov was still a relatively young man. I think he was only like 17 when he actually played this game. But anyway, we're going to look at this from the black perspective. Samsonov played e4. Nesmetnov played e5. And Samsonov went in for knight to c3, the Vienna opening. And the point is that now White's plan is to play moves like f4 and then play bishop c4. And maybe even try and prepare moves like f5 and g4 for a kingside attack, which will be very swift. The plan for white is also to attack this f7 pawn with the bishop on c4 and try and get the queen into play very early as well. Nesmetnov played knight to f6 which targets the e4 pawn and in this game Samsonov played f4. Now typically in the modern day game bishop c4 is considered the best move and white's going to follow up with moves like d3 and f4 which is a bit more of a safer option. Uh, but Nesmetnov rightly says that he would have played knight takes e4 and queen h5 would have been played. And this is actually called the Frankenstein Dracula variation. Um, after knight to d6, we attack the bishop but also defend the f7 square. The bishop usually retreats. Knight c6 is played and now knight to b5, hitting this knight on d6, the only defender of the f7 pawn. Um, the typical moves now are g6, queen f3 to maintain this attack on f7. Black plays f5, and now queen to d5. So the threat of knight takes d6 is still there. Uh, after queen e7, though, white plays knight takes c7, forking the king and the rook. After king d8, there's knight takes a8, b6, and now white should play actually queen to d3, and black should play bishop to b7, and white's forced to get rid of the knights on a8 for a pawn. So knight takes b6, a takes b6, knight to e2, and maybe e e4 and queen h3. And the point is that now it's a double-edged position. Black actually has a really good attack here, but it just depends on if white can hold on. If usually white holds on, they usually win the game. Um, I've played this as white many times. I've never played it as black. But uh, to be honest, as white, I've had quite a lot of success. So it's not necessarily winning for black or white. It's a very tricky position, so both sides have to be very careful. I think this is one of the reasons why many people don't play the Vienna in Grandmaster games, because we get into this type of position, it's very risky to play. So in the game, instead of bishop c4, Samsonov played f4, hitting out at the e5 pawn. And there's Bentonov writes that he played d5, again, counteracting this f4 move. And it's the best reply to a flank attack. So Samsonov took on e5, attacks a knight on f6. Nesmetnov took on e4 with the knight. And White's got a couple of options here. Queen f3 is one move um, that White could have played. But I think Black can now play f5. Um, supporting the knights on e4, very strong. If d3, Black can take on c3, doubling White's pawns, and then play uh, d4. Um, and White's pawn structure is a bit of a mess now. And you probably would favour Black in this position. So I think correctly, Samsonov played knight to f3, developing their knight. And here Nesmetnov played bishop to b4. Bishop to e7 was considered much stronger. Uh, and Nesmetnov also looked at this move, knight to c6. He found an interesting variation after queen to e2 and bishop to f5, queen to b5 and a6. If queen takes d5, then black can play knight to b4, attacking the queen and the pawn on c2. And black's got a much better position. So in this interesting variation, if a queen takes b7, again black can play knight to b4. If knight takes e4, Nesmetnov went into this d takes e4 move. If d takes e4, then knight to d4, attacking the bishop on f5, defending the pawn on c2. But black can play rook to b8, attacking the queen. After queen a7, bishop to c5, queen takes c5 and queen takes d4. Queen takes d4, and knight takes c2, forking the king, queen, and rook, a family fork. And after king f2, there'll be knight takes d4. 
and black is in a much better position. Equally though, after this knight takes e4 move in this variation, black can simply just play bishop takes e4 and still has a better position. Attacking this c2 square, if knight to d4, to defend it, there's rook b8 attacking the queen. After queen a7, black can simply play bishop takes c2, and black's got a better game already. So instead of knight c6 or bishop to e7, Nesmetnov played bishop to b4, and he admitted in his book he had no idea of opening theory at this particular point in time, so he didn't think this move has any merits, to be honest. Samsonov played queen to e2, black took on c3, and then b takes c3. So black's doubled white's pawns on the c-file, but white's got a relatively strong centre. They can just play moves like d4 now, and the centre is incredibly strong. Bishop to g4 pins the knights on f3. And here, Nesmetnov believes that white should play bishop to a3 because it stops black castling. If knight c6, white can castle. After queen d7, we have a very equal game for both sides. So both sides have a fighting chance. In the game, Samsonov now played queen to b5 with check. And we're getting some interesting variations. Black can actually play knight to c6 here. If queen takes b7, then black can actually castle, believe it or not. Because if um, white goes capturing pieces, queen takes c6, black can take on f3. If g takes f3, then queen h4, check, king d1, and knight to f2, forking the king and rook. After king to e2, there's knight takes h1. And black just won the exchange and has a much better position. Probably threatening to play queen takes h2 next move. If we just go back in this variation after bishop takes f3, the best move for white is actually to play h4, stopping black going queen h4. But even so, after bishop to g4, the material is equal, but um, black's got a better position. In fact, actually black's a pawn down, but we'll probably play moves like rook to e8 and try and win this pawn on e5 very quickly indeed. Back to the game though, Samsonov has just played queen to b5, Nesmetnov blocked it with the move c6, attacking the queen, and the queen takes on b7, threatening to play queen takes a8. Nesmetnov took on f3, and now the h4 square is free for this queen to jump into. There's no more knight defending it. If white takes on f3, black can play queen h4, check. If king to d1, there's knight to f2 with a fork again. If king e2, there's knight takes h1. And white can actually play queen to c8 here, and the best move for black is to play queen to d8. If king e7, black gets mated with bishop to a3, check. And if c5, bishop takes c5 is checkmate. So after queen c8, queen d8 is forced. And after queen takes, king takes bishop g2 to win the knight back. I actually think black's doing a lot better here than white. Now Smetnov actually thinks the two bishops in the pawn centre is enough compensation for white. Uh, but black is actually material up here. If you look at this position with an engine, you'll see that Stockfish actually gives this around plus two and a half points. Um, so that's quite a significant advantage. I think relatively today in modern times, I think a lot of players will be able to convert this as black. So bishop takes f3 has just been played, but Samsonov didn't play g takes f3. He played queen takes a8, grabbing the rook in the corner. And now Nesmetnov played an interesting move. Bishop takes g2. The point is, if white plays bishop takes g2, he'll play queen h4 again and check. If king to e2, then I think black can play castles. If queen takes a7, black should play c5, blocking the queen out and threatening to play queen to f2. And black's in a much stronger position here. The rook down, but now has an amazing attack coming right up. For instance, bishop takes e4 would run to queen takes e4 with check and black will pick up the rook. I think the best move here is actually rook f1, stopping queen f2, but then even so, queen takes h2, attacking the bishop is very good for black. If rook f2, then knight c6, and black's getting more pieces into the game, and can even take the exchange if they wish. Again, bishop takes e4 doesn't work here due to queen to h5 with check. If bishop to f3, there's queen takes e5. And if king f1, there's knight takes a7. So if we just go back, after queen h4, king d1 is actually considered the best move. But even so, again, black should just play queen to g4 with check. 
king e1, then should just castle again. Uh, if rook g1 to protect the bishop, then queen h4 again, king d1 and queen takes h2. A similar position to the one we just saw. And even if rook f1 in this position, then this queen takes g2, rook to b1, knight to d7 attacking the queen with the rook. If queen takes a7, queen to g4, queen e3 and knight takes e5. So black's the exchange down here, but still has a tremendous advantage and an amazing attack coming right up. For instance, black can play moves like knight to c4 and start pushing these pawns up, perhaps. But white's king looks really weak in this position. But back to the game. Bishop takes g2. A sacrifice has just been played by Nezmetinov. But weirdly now, Samsonov didn't take it. He played bishop to e2. And here, I want you to pause the video and try and find the mate in five moves. So it's black to move and mate in five. I wonder if you can find it, the smothered mate. What would you have played in this position? Nesmetnov found the mate. He played queen to h4 with check. King to d1 is the only move. And now followed in with knight to f2, check. Again, king e1 is the only move. And now here there's a smothered mate trick. Knight to d3, check from the king and knight. Again, there's no way to block the check, so king d1 is the only move. And now it's mate in two. Can you spot it? Queen e1, check. Rook takes queen is forced, and there's Metnoff finished off with knight to f2, and that's checkmate and a smothered mate. And he said in his book, this is the first and only smothered mate in my career. It was only many years later that I noticed that the final attack in this game recalls the ending of a game by a famed Italian master, Gio Ancino Greco, in the year 1600 to 1634. So this wasn't the most amazing game or the most accurate game in the world, but it definitely shows that Nesmetnov was a talent in the making. And uh, to be honest, it's going to be quite hard to see a smothered mate in five moves straight in the open to middle game. So he did well to spot that, I think. I'm not sure what the time control for this game was, but I just thought it was very interesting to see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please drop a like, comment and subscribe if you did, and hopefully... I'll see you in the next videos to come. Thank you very much.